Hello everyone and welcome to our first real Collector's Corner video. Since this series was mentioned a while back, here's a quick refresher. Generally, we'll have elements of the other series, but focus more on the collecting side of surplus and militaria, such as what new items we get, things to look out for, storage tips, and so on. From time to time though, more open-ended items or topics where not all the info is available will be discussed and speculated upon, which is actually going to be the focus on this one, as it's going to be on the interesting story surrounding this very strange and not often seen Afghan National Army uniform that has a Canadian pattern, or CADPAT for short, printed onto it. We'll be tracing it back and doing a little detective work to try and figure out exactly what is up with this set. Looks like we have ourselves a little mystery. CADPAT, the current camouflage pattern of the Canadian Armed Forces. This design helped influence the digital camouflage movement of the early and mid-2000s, seeing many countries copy and rework the design multiple times over. However, though it helped influence and create the spread of digital camouflage, CADPAT itself hasn't really been used in an official military capacity beyond Canada. This is likely due to a few factors such as inactive copyright, heavy restrictions on uniforms that sees many older and no longer needed ones being shredded and recycled, and finally the distinctive colorways that really only work in denser woodland environments as far as the TW or temperate woodland variant goes. However, that has not stopped many commercial copies being made for the public which are often easy to identify based on their uniform cut, noticeable tag differences, and slight variations in the overall color. Much like their official counterparts, these commercial copies are even on the harder side to locate compared to others out there. One of the most peculiar of these, however, is one made in Pakistan that was sold by the US-based business Zarinas. This small company offers a wide variety of traditional Afghan garments, jewelry, and accessories, as well as a small selection of uniforms and patches. At one point, one of those was this strange CADPAT copy. Quality-wise, it's not the best with the jacket featuring a simple button-up front closure, two inwardly angled chest pockets closed by way of Velcro strips, adjustable cuffs that are secured by buttons, and two shoulder pockets closed the same way as the chest ones, which feature two Velcro rectangles to allow the addition of patches and insignia, such as the pair that came with it, a basic full-color flag of Afghanistan, and a circular one featuring the Afghan National Army's emblem. The pants were very straightforward, seeing only a zippered fly, belt loops, two waist pockets, and a single rear pocket closed by a single button. As you can see, the overall condition on this one is not that great, showing signs of wear and a bit of aging. So, why even highlight this piece, as it seems like a weird attempt to pass off a less than stellar commercial copy as an Afghan soldier's camouflage uniform? Well, here's where things get a little interesting and a bit confusing. These, along with various patches showing Afghan flags, insignia, and so on, started popping up on Zarina's website around the the end of 2011 or so, mixed in with actual recognizable Afghan police and other agency uniforms. Roughly three years prior to this, Hyperstealth Industries licensed their Spec Forces Woodland, renamed Spec Forces Afghan Woodland, to the ANA to be used as their primary infantry camouflage, which caused something of a controversy as many felt a green dominant pattern in Afghanistan was a waste of US money and resources. You can check out our video covering that topic and the controversy surrounding it, link to which can be found above, as well as at the end of this one. Anyway though, a few may be thinking this pattern looks somewhat similar to the Afghan woodland camo in really only color and the fact that both are digital designs. But even to the untrained eye, one can tell they're pretty different. On the left, you have an official Afghan M65 field jacket in the Spec Forces pattern, and on the right, you have the Zarina uniform. Additionally, here's an up-close look at the two patterns. Going a step further, here's a look at an unissued CADPAT jacket next to the Zarina uniform. Though they both look pretty similar, you can see the colors and sizing are off just a little bit. Anyway though, enter the British Army's 1st Mechanized Brigade, who in February of 2013 were training to take over the duties of the 4th within Helmand Province, as well as achieve the goal of improving the operational capacities and hand over control of bases to the Afghan National Security Forces, ANSF for short. As a part of their training, they engaged in a five-day exercise for media agencies at the Baden's Clump Training Facility in Salisbury Plain, England. It was during this time British forces were seen working alongside another group, wearing an assortment of mismatched surplus pieces from Germany, France, and elsewhere, along with this CAD Pat facsimile. Though they wore a and insignia, they weren't Afghans. They were just actors playing the part to simulate how it may be working with ANSF personnel within Afghanistan. So, based on this, the following can be surmised about these mysterious Canadian copies. A uniform was needed for the actors, both to look somewhat accurate and for press purposes. Being that the real Spec Forces camouflage uniforms were relatively new and regulated, 
meaning they were hard to acquire, an alternative was found by way of Zarinas. However, because of the cold weather and the uniforms being very thin and lightweight, they had to be supplemented with an assortment of surplus pieces. Now, this is just speculation inferred from the information about the event plus actually seeing one of the uniforms in person. It is entirely possible the reasoning for them picking this specific uniform is something else entirely. If you search Afghan CADPAT or really any other combination of similar words or phrases, you pretty much get images of Canadian forces in Afghanistan or pictures of these uniforms on websites that just say Afghan Army Camouflage or something close. Aside from the few photos of the exercise, there really isn't any photographic proof Afghan forces, or forces of any kind for that matter, ever actually fielded them. It's hard to say how many were actually used for the training and how many were actually sold to the public before and after. Zarinas has stopped offering them, though they do sell various slide-on shoulder rank epaulets in the pattern, which is sort of funny as the uniform itself doesn't even have shoulder tabs to attach them to. They now seem to be only available through eBay and the occasional military seller's website, and almost always come with the two patches. Often they are advertised as Afghan National Army uniforms and bringbacks, but the descriptions never seem to have any additional information or time frame as to when they were actually used. Judging from the last few that were available, a full uniform falls between 150 and 250 US dollars, but whether someone wants to pay that much for a more than likely fantasy commercial piece that was seen being used in an officially unofficial capacity for five days during a cold snowy February in southern England for training purposes is another thing. Either way, the story of these weird CADPAT uniforms is an interesting one that goes to show that surplus and military pieces, be they original, fakes, copies, or otherwise, can have a life of their own years after and sometimes have their actual significance lost or altered in the process. Well, hopefully this first official entry into the collector's corner was interesting to those who watched and maybe helped shed some light on this rather small but intriguing mystery that has loomed for some since 2013. Now, chances are good this uniform has been talked about, possibly leading others to put the same pieces together long before this video. So, if anyone watching has any more information, details, or photos of it in use, feel free to mention it in the comments section or message us directly through social media. These lingering mystery pieces frequently seem to have more to them that doesn't surface until they're brought up for discussion. Additionally, if you have any other strange or mysterious pieces or topics you'd want discussed, let us know and maybe we'll get to it in a future installment. As always though, be sure to subscribe or simply check back for more videos right here on Uniform History.